Greetings, magnificent souls to the Lily Bewley podcast, where we have open and honest discussions about ourselves. This is your host, Lily Bewley, and I'm honored to have conversations here with thought leaders, visionaries, healers, and even solo conversations with myself about things I am currently reflecting on. This is a place where we break down, break away, and break through our emotional trauma, allowing ourselves to be healthy, be happy, and live a peaceful life. We are tired of being sick and tired. We are tired, but we are not giving up. We know that there is something magnificent inside of us. And because we are fighting daily, hourly, and by the minute, fighting ourselves, our kids, our spouses, we have to do things differently. We have to break the cycle. We don't have a million chances. We have to be happy now. We have to find a way. So how do we do that? How is that possible? If you look around at what society is telling you, they tell you that what we're doing is impossible. Yet it's happening every single day. And it's happening through the practice and the love that we call awakening the magnificent soul. We are all magnificent souls. And these are our stories of healing. Today in episode 96, I welcome Andrea Shear to the show to talk about becoming a wonder seeker. I love this episode. And don't forget to let me know your thoughts about this episode or anything you would like me to cover on future podcasts at epiphanyvault.com. Remember, it is a safe place and I would welcome the discussion. And also a request, if you are enjoying the show, please rate and share and review so we can get the word out to more and more souls who want to heal. And now on to the show today. My guest today is Andrea Shear. She's an author, artist, and life coach whose work is driven by her belief in the transformative power of creativity for joy and well-being. Her new book, Wonder Seeker, 52 Ways to Wake Up Your Creativity and Find Your Joy, straddles the world of creativity and mindfulness and playfully inspires readers to live more vibrant lives full of presence, joy, and connection. I really hope you enjoy this conversation today with Andrea Shear. Andrea, so awesome to have you here. I am so excited about this conversation. I have some things to tell you too, but we'll get into it. Ooh, well, thank you for having me. And you, you've got me intrigued, right? I know. <laughs> I know. I love it. Starting off with a little bit of uh, anticipation. Exactly. And that is this book, girl, that you that you put out. And it was it's recent, right? It came out. Yeah, just came out in November 2021. Yes. It's called yeah. Wonder Seeker. And well, I'm sure that we're going to talk about this, but it's 52 ways to wake up your creativity and find your joy. Girl, <laughs> this is my new, this is my new gift book for Aww. people. I've already sent it to people. Um, it used to be, it was like years ago, it was Eckhart Tolle, Tolle or Tolle. Then it came, then it's, I use um, one of my mentors books in like in my coaching practice. And today, or like a couple of days ago, when I read this, I'm like, okay, this is my new gift book. To send to people. So thank you. Aww, that makes me really happy. Thank you so much. Yeah. It's just, um, it's so beautiful. I love it. So we'll talk more about that too. Um, but it's called Wonder Seeker. And I think maybe it would be, that maybe is a great place to start. Like um, this book, I guess, why this book? Um, What is wonder? All of the good things that comes up with this. Yeah, gosh. So, well, I love that question first. Like what is wonder? Because, and, and, and so much of wonder is thinking that we know things and then pausing and being like, maybe I don't know what it is. What is wonder? What actually is it? You know? Mm. So when I consider that question, it's like, it's that moment of, of surprise and delight when you witness something beautiful or really interesting or something you've never seen before, or, um, and you get that sort of intake of breath and that like wide-eyed kind of delight, like, oh my God, like I didn't know life included this, right? Yes. And it's such, um, it's such a heart opening moment and it's a moment of gratitude and it's a moment of like connection with life itself, with nature, with, um, spirit, like there's so much happening in this one moment and it's so juicy and it connects us to this kind of reverence for life, for being alive, for being in a body in this, in this lifetime on this planet. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I just think it's, um, it's something where I started to understand when I was looking at my work over time, um, 
that wonder is kind of a thread for me. And it's one of the things that, that nourish, nourishes me and helps me um, want to be here, actually, which sounds a little dramatic. Oh, that's so deep. But makes me want to be here. It's like, it's, yeah, that, that delight, that joy, it, it feels like, um, like food, like soul food for me. Oh, that's beautiful. I love it too, because, um, when I was reading your book, it really helped me slow, like what you're saying, like slow down. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the, the quote from Brene Brown that, that it's on display here is that's what, that's basically what she said. And that confirms a lot for me is helping it help me slow down. And it has so many like little great practices. And I like, girl, I, I cried. I laughed. It's so good. I took my dog for a walk and I was like, oh, there's a heart shaped pebble. And I picked it up. You know, it's so good. So good. And I think it is one of those things that is missed Mm. a lot, you know, because we have this very, um, I mean, there are a lot of things probably I'd love to hear what your thoughts on them, but the things that come to me is like, Mm. we are very results oriented kind of society at times. Um, you know, we always go to the next best thing and we're rushing around and it's awesome to have goals, but it's not so awesome when it kind of takes you away from like the present moment. And stuff. is that kind of what you found? Absolutely. Like there's, there's this, you know, there's this really nice balance, this sort of sweet spot between really appreciating what's here right now and what's right in front of us, whether that's literally in a moment in the very micro of like, oh my gosh, like, look at us. Like I, I get to have this beautiful conversation with you about wonder. How lucky are we? How great is that? And so to be able to appreciate what's here right now, however messy our circumstances are, and then also at the same time, be able to move toward, um, our dreams and the things that we, mm. we still have yet to create in our lives and the ways that we want to make our life better. And, and all of that, it's like, but you're right. Society and culture is always training us to look ahead and want more. Mm-hmm. And what you have isn't good enough and, oh. and enough. Right. So we're always trying to get better. I mean, we're talking at the beginning of the year right now in like new year's resolutions time. Mm-hmm. And although I love doing ritual around new year's day and I have a whole like completion ritual that I do and like setting intentions for the new year, it always has to be in balance though, with what we're talking about, which is like sinking into what's here, what's working, what's, what's beautiful right now. And these practices in the book are, are sort of helping you tip the scales in that direction because life is already taking you in the other direction. Mm. So wonder seeker is, is trying to help us level the playing field a little bit. Totally, totally. And I felt like, I don't know if it was just where I was, or it was like, I pretend I've the audience knows about this, but like, I have a, I'm very protective about my time now. And like, I have a day that I call alignment day that I have Mm. one day a week. And it's just like me and just no screens. And I really protect that. And that's when I was, that's when I was reading your book and it like completely opened up. Um, Mm. I don't know if that's just where I was, but it was just really dope. It was just so, it felt really Mm. good. And and I was like, Oh, this is something like, again, I'm going to be buying a lot of these. So, oh <laughs> yeah. Well, and I love that, <laughs> so that good. idea of an alignment day where you are really creating like a sanctuary of time during the week where you are filling yourself up. I imagined you, you read and you walk and yeah. listen to music, music or and dance all that or whatever. Yeah. 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 Gorgeous. Means, yeah. I, I'm very protective of that. Um, so Wonder helps us soothe our nervous system. That's a note that, that we, that we wanted to talk about today. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm assuming it's a lot kind of big picture of what we just, we have just been talking about, but can we kind of narrow that down? Like, how does that happen? How do, why does staying coming back to joy or coming back to wonder here in the present moment, how does that help our nervous system? Yeah. So a lot of the book for me was born out of, um, a lot of the practices in the book were born out of a pretty intense, um, generalized anxiety disorder and panic Mm, disorder that developed later. Um, I'm sure a lot of us can relate to that. And so just, um, soothing my nervous system enough to be able to take a full breath on a given day or to feel like I was in my skin and not a little bit off register, like floating above my body a little bit um, and a little agitated. um, I would have to, you know, 
figure it out. Like, okay, it looks like if I take a walk around the block every few hours, I feel like better and I can breathe or whatever. And then I noticed that some of these creative practices, if I do what I call now, like a curiosity walk or a wonder walk, um, even for five or 10 minutes, I just take my camera and I look around and I hold this question, like what's beautiful or interesting about my mm. environment right now. And it could be the same lap that you do every single day, but it's like, what have I never noticed before? Maybe it's the, like the lemons juxtaposed against the blue sky that catches your eye or the glittery beads of dew on the grass um, or the little heart pebble, like you noticed the other yeah. day. And it just drops you into the moment. And um, yeah, I mean, it's a mindfulness practice essentially, right? And we mm -hmm. know that mindfulness practices tend to soothe our nervous system. So there's that level of it. And then there's also the level um, that I mentioned in the book, which is um, that we have this in hardwired into our brain, we have this thing called the negativity bias. Yes. And so um, I learned about this from a neuroscientist here in Berkeley, who Dr. Rick Hansen, who says that we have this holdover from a time when we could have been eaten by tigers, where we're always scanning for what's wrong in our environment. And that's what will get our attention. Mm -hmm. And so even though that, that kind of vigilance isn't required anymore, our brains still orient toward, okay, what's wrong? What's okay. What do I have to do next? What's right. Well, yeah. All the time, Except, all the time. And so we need practices like, like the walk that I just described to train our brain to scan also for what's working, what's beautiful, what's interesting, um, what's neutral even, right? Like in, 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 that's the only way we can kind of balance out our, our brain chemistry a little mm -hmm. bit. So that's another mm -hmm. way that these, these practices can soothe our nervous system is like we're literally training our brain out of the red zone of fight, flight, freeze, mm -hmm. and into the green zone of resilience and calm. And like, actually everything's okay in this moment. Oh yeah. I love that. And that I have, again, I have like similar practices to that, but that is, yeah, that's so true. Cause it does like, it just felt so it feels just a lot calmer. Um, yeah. And I also wanted to offer alternatives for people who you know, the thought of sitting, like doing a seated meditation is really challenging for them, or they've mm -hmm. never been able to keep up that practice or whatever. Like right. some of us do better with, with moving practices like, like myself. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, totally. Absolutely. Um, and I think, you know, just the permission really to, and I've, I feel mm -hmm. like I say this a lot, but I feel like just the permission to find out what works for you. Yeah. And cause I feel in personal development, there's like, again, there's like this really fine line of like people telling you what to do and right. <laughs> you know, and, and that may not be working or whatever. And so there's, a, there could be a little bit of shame involved with that. So, mm -hmm. um, I mean, that's, I think probably one of my favorite things about this work of art that you present is that, mm -hmm. um, there's just so many great ideas and some practices really kind of felt like they were for me and some of them didn't. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but yeah, oh, that's so good. It's so juicy. Aww. Mm, I'm just touching it and I'm feeling the warmth. <laughs> oh, yay. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm also curious, is there a distinction between joy and wonder? Mm. Um, I don't know. I don't know if that brings up anything or if that's something you're like comfortable with talking about. I don't really know, but I feel like, like people talk about joy sometimes and um. I feel like for me, wonder breathes joy maybe, or yeah. maybe it's the other way around. I don't know. Is there something there to discuss? Yeah. Right. Well, no, it's, it's a good question because I'm, I'm, you know, I'm talking about both and, and I think joy is probably like a side effect of wonder, like mm -hmm. joy and delight. Um, and maybe that's sort of cumulative. Like, I think when we are cultivating more wonder, and more presence, we tend to feel more joyful, joyful. In, mm. in our life. Um, but I'll, I'll make another distinction, which is interesting too. People ask like, well, what's the difference between wonder and awe? And I think awe can, can feel scary sometimes. Mm. So like you can be awed by a wildfire, right? Um, like there's all these wildfires that are, that just happened in Colorado. My, my yeah. sister's town was just 
obliterated by this big fire. And I'm sure there were lots, there was a lot of awe happening when people were witnessing this, but, um, but it's not a pleasurable, it's not delight, it's not joyful. So I think sometimes awe like can also be beautiful and, and joyful and all of that, yeah. but that's, that's the distinction that I make between those two things. Got you. Okay. Do you find that there are any misconceptions like about joy or about wonder? Mm. I don't know. I got that for some reason. Like when I, when I kind of um, read, you know, uh, prepare for, you know, our talk today or like obviously Mm. read your work, I, I, that came to me and I'm wondering, um, you know, are there some myths that we can break maybe about joy or about wonder and opening up that combo? I'm so glad you asked that. And I think what I would say is that the misconception is that, you know, you might look at the book or read the book and be like, oh, she's happy all the time. Or like, you know, she's made differently or whatever. It's not for me. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, But I think really to live a joyful life is to be able to meet life in a really intimate way. And that is like meeting our difficulty, meeting our fear, meeting our grief, Mm. all of it, being willing to, um, to be with what's true and to work with what's true. Um, so like, so some of the practices in the book are about like, um, I think there's one called, um, meeting whatever shows up with kindness. So like, So like hand on your heart, checking in with yourself, like, Hey, sweetie, how are you today? And it's like noticing, Oh, I feel sad or I feel lonely and being able to be a friend to yourself in those moments and, and and not be afraid of it and, and run to like numb it out with screens or however we do that. We all do that, Mm, but to really sit even for a minute and just be with like, Oh yeah, you feel lonely. Like you're a, I'm talking about myself, like you're a single mom and Mm -hmm. you don't have a partner right now. And sometimes, you know, we have to, I have to work with loneliness that shows up. Mm. And so I think being, um, you know, in, in the sort of Brene Brown, like vulnerability is courage kind of way, like being able to be brave enough and willing enough to be uncomfortable, to sit with ourselves with all of it. I think that's so much of what we're doing when we're carving out place space for joy. Right. Yes. Yeah, I do. Yeah. That's it. That hits for me because, um, yeah, I feel, and this is me too. Like my experiences and, you know, I, I grew up kind of in this, in this place where, um, my mom used a lot of toxic positivity and there was nothing ever wrong. And it was like, um, not, not to mention other factors going on, but just like within this context. Um, and so I think that I learned to override like to over like my over. And I, this is extremely common from what I'm finding out. Right. And that override factor is like toxic positivity. It's like all of that. And just like, not really honoring what it is. That's right. That's like what you're saying, like, that's true. Right. Which is like sadness and, Mm -hmm. um, unhappiness, frustration, confusion, or like all of that stuff. Um, it can actually, you know, even if it's like, like you're like, even with a negativity bias, even if it's normal, or even it's that that's your go-to, it can be Mm -hmm. really harmful because it, I do feel like it, it, how do you feel the whole, like, how do you feel a really, really good joy and a really good wonder Mm -hmm. if you can't feel a really good, like the sadness. Exactly. Like yeah, exactly. Actually, one of the things that Brene Brown says as well is like, we can't selectively numb emotions. So yes. if, we're numbing, if we're numbing our pain, we're also numbing our joy. And we're really just narrowing the range of what we're willing to experience. And so mm. our lives become smaller. Right. Yeah. And I think what you're pointing to with your mom, it was like, it's just, a, it's like a misunderstanding, right? Like, yeah that era of, of self-help or pop psychology was like, think good thoughts, you know, and, and over it. I mean, they were sort of consciously telling us like override those dark, those bad emotions, those negative emotions. And it's like, no, we have to include them. (laughs) Things have evolved. And now we know like, Oh, we can't just step over them and just think happy thoughts. It's like, Nope. Unfortunately that doesn't work. (laughs) That doesn't work no more. No. Yes. So I'm glad we're having this conversation. <laughs> yeah. Um 
Yeah. Oh, that's so good. Mm. Um, any other misconceptions that you can kind of think of off the top mm. of your head or not at this moment? I mean, maybe we'll, we'll find our way to. Something yeah. Else, I, but, I feel yeah. like that there's something there for me for joy. I'm not quite sure though. Mm. Um, maybe about the way that it's supposed to look or supposed to feel. Yeah. I was going to ask you actually, how do you define joy? Um, for me, I like, I'm a very kinesthetic person when I'm realizing after like doing a lot of healing, um, for me, it's like expansive for Mm. me. It feels like really, it feels actually very similar to what awe feels, but I, I understand Mm -hmm. what you're saying. We can kind of go back to that for, but for me, joy feels very, um, like it just feels like open and safe and expansive. Mm. Um, Mm. and yeah, it's just like little moments are popping up in my head. Like, like when I looked in my dog's eye yesterday and I was like, never leave me. I love you. <laughs> oh, dogs are such joy teachers, aren't they? <laughs> yes. But that, I mean, that's, I, I wouldn't have known this, like, like joy before healing for me probably would have felt like, um, like, like, uh, accomplishments maybe, or like, mm. oh, I did this or like, you know, what have you. But I think now, like after I've done a little bit of what I call like opening and and healing, Mm -hmm. like it just feels expansive for me. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'm also thinking like, this is a great question. Like what is joy? Like it's it's kind of a hard question to answer Totally, um, because joy also looks like presence and right. So like this is joy, like having this deep connection with you and Mm -hmm. having this conversation and that feels like joy to me. It Mm. feels, feels sacred. It feels, um, yeah, there's depth, like all these things that I, I love geeking out on this stuff. And it just like, (laughs) this feels like joy, right? Me too. Um, Yeah. And so I think anytime that I'm really immersed in the moment, whether I'm making art or I'm having a great conversation or I'm dancing, like whatever it is, that's, that's joy to me, but it doesn't always look like bright and shiny. It could be like, holding someone's tenderness, like a friend who's going through a hard time. It, it could look like that, but having mm. tea and cozying up on the couch with her. Right. Yeah. It sounds like connection for you. Yeah. 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 Oh, mm. 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 Little, t- little tingly is going on over here. I know <laughs> that's a great question for your listeners. Like what does joy yeah. look like to you? Or does it feel like, yeah. Cause it could Ooh, be quiet. Be- yeah. Or, or it could look lots of different ways. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah. That's a great call out inspired action for this week. My friends, maybe, um, figure out what joy or, or at least be open to that, um, understanding. Yeah. I'll, I'll Mm -hmm. let you know that my, my current, um, joy, I don't know if you call it a joy practice, although that sounds good. Um, (laughs) is, uh, one of my joy practices right now is going to the dog park. I love dogs, but I do not have a dog, but I have a lot of dog friends in the neighborhood and I go to the dog park every night and, um, where they all gather. There's like, sometimes there's like 20 dogs and 20, you know, humans there. I'm sure it's quite the scene too. Cause you're in Berkeley. It's, I can imagine yeah. it's quite the scene. It's quite the scene. And it's so fun. And I get to hang out with my neighbors and who I'm getting to know so well during this pandemic time. And their dogs are so happy. It's like the happiest place on earth. It's like Disneyland up there every night. And so I make it, I just fold it into my day. It's part of my self-care is to go oh. be in that energy. I love that. I love yeah. that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, what you're saying is that when you find out something that works for you, right. Maybe, you know, sprinkle that in. Exactly. But <laughs> other people, it doesn't work for like, I'm, I'm astounded yeah. that going to like hanging out at the dog park without a dog doesn't appeal to more people. <laughs> but yeah. when I share it with friends, they're like, okay, whatever, whatever. Yeah. 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 I talk about this actually now I'm thinking about this. I talk about this to people that I care about and that want to care for me. I'm like, Mm. um, so these are my love language. Obviously like my love language is food. (laughs) Oh yes. Love it. (laughs) Acts of service and, and quality time. So like, Mm. I love fine dining. So like, I find a lot of joy, you know, in Mm. something like that, but yeah. So it's just like, whatever works for y'all out there, you know, like in find ways to, you know, and maybe sprinkle it in, but sprinkle it in. I think for, 
in the ways that you can. Right. So like, like, my sister loves the beach and we're in Phoenix. Mm -hmm. And so I give her, you know, like I gave her like some really beachy things and like gave her a beach candle so I can take her to the beach without taking her to the beach. Right. So like you can be very inventive. I feel like if if you find something that, that brings you joy and Mm -hmm. maybe you can't get that exact thing, maybe you can get a little piece of it, or maybe, you know, like, I don't know, you can really just kind of relish in what's, what, what's good for you. Absolutely. And, you know, this has always been fascinating to me. Like why is it that we resist things that bring us joy? Like, for example, wow. you know, doing yoga, for example, I always feel so good once I'm doing it and I always happy after I've done it, but I resist it. I don't do it very often. <laughs> yes. um, so, yeah. So I just want to acknowledge too, that, you know, this is a very imperfect, um, we're in, we're imperfect creatures and sometimes we know what we love and what makes us feel alive or joyful. And it's still, you know, we still so hard. Yeah. 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 I actually was talking to a client about that today. It's like her inner critic was coming up because, um, she's, she's like, oh, this should be so easy. Why is it so hard for me? This should be so easy. And, yeah, I have thoughts on that, but I think that it, that's entirely normal as well, right? Like where you said, we're in um, the New Year's resolutions time right now, which can be like very exciting for a few days. And then for some people, not all of us, but for some people, it can can really like send you way down that- um, The, the that shame hole. spiral. Yeah, yeah. totally. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Whew. But just talking about joy makes me happy. Um, so I'm wondering, so a new kind of, um, not new, but like a new program that I'm offering this, this, this year is about like femininity and masculinity. Mm. Your book feels very like feminine to me. And even like in your book, you like, you address like her or she, or, um, and you know, about, you know, joy isn't just limited. Let me just say to like the feminine, but, um, you also, if just breathe, it bred so much like creativity in me. Mm. Um, and I know like that, that is your space. Like you are, you're so creative. This like the book y'all is a work of art, literally. Like Mm -hmm. I open it up and it's like so colorful and vibrant and it's just, it's stunning, stunning. Thank you. Stunning. (laughs) So I'm like wondering just kind of how do you, how do you feel about creativity? Like, um, where does that joy, creativity and wonder, where do they intersect? Mm. Mm. Yeah. Great question. So, well, I've always been a a very creative creature from the time I was a kid. Um, I think we're all creative creatures and we all like use that well of creativity inside us for a variety of things. Um, And some of us have, you know, our creativity is a little more dormant or atrophied. And for others, it's like this really strong muscle that we've honed. Mm -hmm. For me, it's really strong because it's always kind of saved my life. Like art has always been medicine for me. Creativity has always been medicine. Um, both during those times when I was managing anxiety, but, um, but also when I was a kid, um, you know, and, in you know, in various kinds of like, you know, trauma or just the regular hardship of being a kid, um, I knew how to drop into like my deep creative work, whether that was like listening to music and like writing a song or painting a picture or taking photographs of these little mice that I had and I would put costumes on like <laughs> had like a whole so universe good. of creativity happening That's where so I would good. choreograph dance routines for my friends that would come over like it was just so much my um my my language and um yeah. So for people, like, I forget your question already. You were asking about how does creativity, like, how does, intersect? like, where does, yeah. Where does like joy and creativity intersect? Um, like that first. And then I have something else maybe that can follow, but I'm just kind of wondering where that goes. Yeah. Let's see here. Well, I think like, do you need joy? Like, I guess, do you need joy to be creative? Um, mm-hmm. I think the reason why I wonder this is because like, for me, and I'm assuming a lot of people, I know actually a lot of people in my audience are like me, right? Yeah. So I've always said, I'm not creative. Like I want mm-hmm. to be, I want to be like, and I know that you said we're creative in different ways, which I agree, but I've always been like, I'd love to like be artistic. I'd love to draw. Like it feel when I see other people do it, it feels good to me. Right. But I don't feel like I have those skills and I know I can mm-hmm. bring them out in different ways, but I'm just, um, 
I kind of, that's kind of why that, that question was prompted is that mm-hmm. what would you say to people, I guess, also, if they don't feel like that cre- they're creative, does that help? Yeah. yeah. Well, first I would say you're, you're creative in, in different ways that maybe the culture doesn't talk about. Like, I think art making is mm. one way of being creative. You're creating podcasts, you're creating programs for your community. Like you're, mm-hmm. you're creating all sorts of things. Right. 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 Um, you're excited about ideas and you're, you know, you, you're doing all sorts of cr- creative work. Mm-hmm. So I would first say that, that like, let's not limit um, creativity to art making. Um, and then I would also say that um, I love giving people permission to do, do, you know, sort of art making creativity as well. Mm-hmm. So like right now, for example, I mean, for the last, like probably three months, I've been totally obsessed with um, hexapunching paint chips. So I have this hole punch that's shaped like a big hexagon. It's called a hexa punch. And I go and gets just stacks and stacks of paint chips at the hardware store. And then I arrange these, um, these little hexagon pieces of paper into kind of a mosaic on a, on a canvas or on a wood panel. And you don't need any special, you know, training to do that. I'm just literally like gluing these pieces of paper to this wood panel. And I, I mean, I could do it for hours every day. It's endlessly at the moment anyway, exciting (laughs) to me to just play with color this way. And so, um, yeah, so I think that was something that was definitely on my mind when I was writing the book, like this, you know, is very creative book, but it's also a big invitation to Mm -hmm. step in like, Oh, like, I guess I could do like, like the bubble flash mob, for example, Mm -hmm. Um, maybe, you know, when these variants sort of pass by, it'll be a better time. But like, um, I joined a friend to do a bubble flash mop and I didn't exactly know what I was supposed to do. She invited me and I was like, great, let's do it. And it, all it was, was we went to a crowded park in San Francisco on an afternoon and we passed out little bubble containers to every single person that we saw. And we said, okay, at 11, 11, exactly start blowing these bubbles, but not a moment sooner. And they're like, okay, got it. <laughs> and, um, and it was only like 10 minutes later. So, you know, and then, so we passed them out to as many people as we could. And then at exactly 11, 11, this entire park just erupted in bubbles. And it was one of the most stunning, wonder-filled moments of Mm. my life and to be part of it. And everyone was like, you know, it was just gorgeous. And you don't have to be an artist to do that. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I could just feel, cause I've been to Dolores Park a few times. You have? Oh yeah. Yeah. I used to live in it. I lived in San Francisco for about a year. Oh, yeah. Can you imagine? Right. Oh, that's, I mean, that's why I'm putting myself there right now. And it makes me, it does feel me like with, with love and, and Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. Joy, creativity, but you're right. You know, and you actually did spark, um, spark some creativity in me with the paint chip stuff. Cause you know, like, oh, I can never write poetry. I can never do, you know, anything like that. And, you know, I think it's, you know, we do kind of (laughs) uh, limit ourselves in that way unconsciously. And so I I just love, like you're saying, the permission just to open up to uh, expression, I guess, like, and there are like a bunch of different mediums and that's dope. That's that's Mm, so good. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So good. Um, Let's see. Wonder is not transactional. <laughs> <laughs> so this came, this is a quote that, that I pulled um, in my experience with your book. Mm. Um, is that something that we have been talking about already? It's a quote, you know, I, I pulled again. Um, is that something we've been talking yeah. about already or like? No, I think we can talk about it. Yeah. I said, wonder is it trans- transactional because you can't, like, I think you use the example in the book of like, you can't, you're, you're in Arizona, you can't mm-hmm. plunk yourself in front of the Grand Canyon and expect to experience wonder. You mm-hmm. might not, like some people do. I'm sure a lot of people do, but really like, I think when I remember going to the Grand Canyon as a kid, I remember being really hot, being trapped in this car with my family (laughs) and being really crabby. And I don't think I experienced wonder in front of the Grand Canyon. 
um, I don't remember what I experienced, but, but so I say wonder is not transactional in the sense that like you, you can't manufacture it. You can't buy it. You can't buy a ticket to it. Maybe sometimes you buy a ticket to whatever Disneyland and you're like, wow, this is amazing. But, um, but I think that wonder actually finds us and we, uh, what I encourage people to do is to a couple of things. One, um, put yourself in the way of wonder. So mm. increase your chances of wonder by, you know, putting yourself in the way of it. And that might be going to see the sunset. Maybe you can't see the sunset from your house. Maybe you actually have to drive somewhere to go witness it on a given night. Mm. Or maybe you need to step outside and look at the stars. Maybe you like, I, I could go weeks without looking at the stars. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's one thing, putting yourself in the way of wonder, which increases your chances of experiencing it. And then the other thing is, is priming yourself to experience wonder and priming yourself is practicing presence, practicing, like, like going on those walks and, mm-hmm. and sort of training yourself to put your wonder goggles on, which is to like, see, oh, wow, there is so much beauty around here that I've never noticed. Yeah. Um, and then that other thing of like that emotional thing of not stepping over what's actually happening in your heart and staying current with yourself mm-hmm. and not having this like backlog of, of unprocessed emotion that comes out in, in messy, weird ways. Right. Like yeah. I, I, um, an author named uh, Francis Weller calls it soul hygiene. So, and it, it's like, um, yeah, it's like meeting all of those, those sorrows, those feelings, whatever shows up in us, um, so that we're clear and we can invite in those, those other experiences like wonder and joy and beauty. Oh yeah. And making those. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's so good. Um, are those, is that the ingredients that you just said for becoming a wonder seeker? Mm, what did I just say? Let's see. You said three put yourself, things. Put yourself in the way of wonder. Yeah. Prime yourself in all these other ways. These are mm-hmm. lots of ways. Yeah. And let's see. The third one was um, uh, being okay with all of your mm, emotions. Exactly. Emotionally open. Yeah. And then also this idea, um, I mean, this is a playful way to say it, but like this idea of putting on your wonder goggles, it's like, it's, um, I like that image because it really is like a pivot of our attention, right? Mm -hmm. So there's regular life. There's like kind of muggle life um, and like all the things that we have to do and our to-do list and the phone calls and the meetings, all this stuff. And then there's like magic world. There's muggle world, magic world. And so even just having this practice again of the walk, because it's just the easiest way to get into it, I think. having, you know, even 10 minutes out of your day where you're like, okay, putting on my wonder goggles, I'm stepping into beauty, magic, delight time, Mm -hmm. um, can really help. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, well, and then you start to notice like, wow, I am like, I become someone who's so easily delighted now it's like all this practice. I'm like, wow. I'm like one of those old ladies. That's like, isn't this amazing? I like aspire to be one of those old ladies. Right. Yes. That's so funny because I like for my birthday, mm-hmm. um, the, the fair was going on and I was like, I'm going to go to the fair and I'm going to let my inner child just play. And I remember <laughs> like, and this was like, this is me just sober y'all. So I'm yeah. like walking in and I'm like, oh my God, look at those balloons. Look at those colors. Oh my God. I'm like <laughs> cheesecake, funnel cake extravaganza, oh you know? And I'm like, yeah, exactly. it's, 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 uh, it can be very contagious. I feel like if you, um, if you kind of are very, that's just aware, like what you're talking about, these, these beautiful opening steps and Mm. um, like believing that it isn't really transactional and it's all unique to us, you know, like, and I I just caught, I caught myself because I was with my friends. I was like, oh, yep. I'm that lady. Like I'm that old lady now. I love it. Well, and also you're, you're reminding me of something that is also important, which is that um, it matters who we spend our time with. 
Mm-hmm. And, you know, not to say that like everyone needs to be like you or me, um, but to be mindful and because our energy is really precious and it's all of this stuff is contagious. Like people's cynicism is contagious. People's joy is contagious, like all of it. Right. Mm -hmm. So just to notice, like, do I like how I feel around these particular people or how does my energy shift? Because it's almost like we lower our vibration sometimes to meet certain people. Right. hundred percent. Yeah. Because we want to love them and we want them to, we want to align with them because we want them to feel good or we want them to feel connected to us. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, this is a tricky topic, right? Um, Because it's, it's people that we love, but I notice now when I have to lower my vibration to be with someone else. Yep. hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. Um, the people, the listeners know this, but I always say, because like, like mentioned before we got on, like, this is mm. a place that I really started talking about codependency, which is all about people. Like it's all oh, about yeah. relationship and people. And I always say now, like, this is all great. And it's, I, this is actually a really great bookend to, to the combo mm. today, but like, it has to be with the right people. It has to yeah. be with the right, like boundaries don't like quote unquote work. I mean, they do if like you get really extreme, but with the right people, you don't, you hardly even have to get extreme. Right. Like, so it's like, there's so there's like a whole other, I feel like it's a whole different subject, but I think that like, yes, 100% is like, um, I always think about when I used to play sports Mm -hmm. and whenever our, our team was good, of course, but like when, (laughs) when we had to, when we had to play, like we would all, we would always play at the level that, that our competition was always, right. you know? Right. And so, um, oh yeah, there's so much in that, but I think that's mm. like a really important asterisk is like, um, mm. check, like check your energy. Like you're saying, like, check your energy. Like, am I not my, my, the, the bad, the last kind of bad relationship that I was in, he mm. would always kind of demean me or like check mm-hmm. me in a bad way. And it like really did kind of dim my light. I didn't really know it then at the point, but at, but like, this is great having a conversation. Yeah. So if people are at that point, it's like an awareness of like, oh mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. maybe so Yeah. Good. And I like the, there's also like the metaphor of like a really good dance partner makes you a better dancer, mm-hmm. right? Like if you're doing partner dancing and they're actually better than you you will like, you will become a better dancer. They can lead and you can, yeah. All of a sudden you're like, so wow, true. I'm amazing with this person. Right. So, so true. it can be the other direction as well. So, mm, so yeah. true. Oh, I love it. Mm. Thank you. Thank you for the convo. Oh my God. Um, it was such a pleasure. Thank you. Yes, it's my pleasure. Um, a few things before we close up. Do you have anything that you're working on right now? I know um, Wonder Seeker is out. So I'd love to, to give you the opportunity to, to let us know where you can find that, where people mm-hmm. can follow you and what are you working on right now? Yeah. So, um, well, my, my site is andreashear.com, A-N-D-R-E-A-S-C-H-E-R. And um, so that's where you can find all the things I've got going on. Um, right now, I am, I'm leading a couple of circles of women in particular. And um, that's been just this joy of my life for the last mm. couple of years. Um, so I'm continuing to do that. Um, but what I haven't announced yet, but I'll just take the opportunity to do it okay. now. So I have a very um, sort of quirky side project that I just thought about um in the last week and I'm starting to um gain some traction on it's called the library of wonder and I have a voicemail that um that I can share with you and you can publish it if you like sure, um, yeah. in the show notes um but I want it's a it's a voicemail and people can call in and leave moments of wonder um either that they you know potent memories of wonder from their past or current experiences of wonder and I want to create a whole library of people's wonder moments and oh, then and then build out some, some some sort of radio show or something where we can you know they'll all be stitched together in a in a in an artful way wow oh that's gorgeous Ooh, yeah so look forward to that awesome and then the book is on amazon that's where i got it any other places yeah. i'm sure it's everywhere it's everywhere okay, yeah good, good. Yeah, thank you y'all so get much. this book it's so mm-hmm. good <laughs> thank you thank you thanks for the conference today it was amazing pleasure. 
Greetings, magnificent souls to the Lily Bewley podcast, where we have open and honest discussions about ourselves. This is your host, Lily Bewley, and I'm honored to have conversations here with thought leaders, visionaries, healers, and even solo conversations with myself about things I am currently reflecting on. This is a place where we break down, break away, and break through our emotional trauma, allowing ourselves to attract health, be wealthy, and happy, and live a peaceful life. I'm going to let that one go, but you know what we mean. No, we're not. (laughs) 